set up your unit, you need to have a couple reference points. You need to have reference point A and B. A is where you're set up at, reference point B is where you're going to shoot at. That could be 30, 40, 50 feet away. Uh, generally, it's acceptable just to have your reference point set up, your second reference point set up outside or just beyond the full scene you're shooting. In this case, we have a laser plummet. What we want to do is locate our first reference point. So I'm going to turn on my machine, the machine's on, I'm then going to ask it to find or to, excuse me, to show me where I'm located at. Now right on the toe of my foot you'll see a red dot and that is actually where the location of this, uh, uh, where our reference point is going to go. And what I do is I take a PK nail and I'll put a PK nail down into the ground to identify my first reference point. Now you can hold this by hand, but for safety reasons, we'd ask that you get a hold of a pair of uh, vice grips or pliers or something to hold on with them, because it is very easy for these to slip out of your hand while you're pounding them into the pavement and uh, cause some serious injury to you or somebody else around you. And we've had near incidents where these have flown out of hands and nearly taken people's eyes out. So it's best to use a pair of vice grips to hold on to them as you pound it into the ground. And you'll need some sort of a hammer. In this, count, in this case I carry a, a two pound uh, sludge hammer and that's really good for use for, for using to pound into the ground. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate my reference point again. Why don't you cut in a second? Go over here and stand in the shadows. So see it? I see it. See it right down there? Uh, let me make sure I get this in. Okay. Okay, now what I've got is the laser dot is pointed right in the center of my PK nail. I'm going to pound it into the pavement. Once I get down far enough, I can release my vice grips and pound it in. Okay, to verify and to help uh, any concerns out with calibration of the uh, pocket PC or your station to assure that you've got the correct distancing on it. What you should do is take a tape measure. In this case, I've got a 300 foot tape measure. Uh, you can use a 100 foot, you can use a 50 foot, 25 foot, it doesn't really matter as long as you have something to coordinate it with. And what you will want to do is put this on your first reference point, have somebody hold it there. Derek, if you can come over here and hold it for me. On the reference point, in this case, we're going to go ahead and stretch it out approximately 50 feet. Once you get your tape measure pulled out, make sure it's nice and taut and it's nice and straight. Lay it down and then you're going to take a second PK nail, put it into your vice grips for safety reasons and put it right at the 50 foot mark. And we're going to lay that into the pavement. Everything worked out well, that should calibrate to 50 feet on the pocket PC when we shoot our, our shots. Once you have your back sight point identified, if you have a back sight uh, or if you have a second tripod or you have a man with a stick standing here, the height of that instrument needs to be identified so that everything correlates to ground level. And in this case, we're right over the top of the second PK nail, and we are at five foot two inches. Well, now that the machine's set up, let's make sure it's zero set again. And what we need to do is press and press whatever buttons you require for your machine setup to get to that area that sets the HZ or the horizontal angle to zero zero. And that's the case we're going to do it right now. We've now set it up so that the area between this unit and my backside point is considered a zero degree heading.
Now, why is this important that we do this when we have a back sight set up? First off, if you recall just a few minutes ago, we laid a tape measure out to 50 feet from this point and put another PK nail in up the road. The reason we do this is a couple different reasons. The safety reasons, first off, if your unit were to uh, go down and you were to have to reset again, and you've only got three or four shots in your scene, it would save you from having to go back to the beginning of everything and reshoot the whole scene. But now that we have everything set in, we have a PK nail on both sides, we can reset up at any time. We can come back tomorrow, we can come back later on in the year, we can come back at any point in time, set this scene up, and not have to shoot the whole thing in, but just grab those points of which are, are important to us at the time, and then add it to your diagram. The second thing is, is if you are using a pocket PC or even a recon, they are, they are electronic equipment and once in a while things do happen and uh, they could go down on you. If they do end up going down on you and you have to go and come back later, the information is still stored. We can still pick up where we left off by having this reference point. And then third thing is it calibrates it. First off, if with me having a zero point here and a 50 point, feet point there, I can go into court and I can identify to the court that there's an exact measurement taken not only by tape measure but by the unit and it correlates to each other which helps correlate all the measurements within your diagram and makes it more uh, acceptable for the courts to take. It also makes it more, uh, makes it less of an error value when you do get into court and start talking about different issues, say with speeds or measurements or distances. Uh, so there's, it's very important that you have that second reference point identified so you can come back later and set up on it. Once, you're, once you've identified your reference points, one good thing to do is to take a can of paint or something that's not going to disappear from the roadway overnight and go ahead and paint an X or a circle or something over that reference point so that you can identify it later and you can find it later on. You may not be the one returning to the scene. Maybe a partner of yours has to return to the scene. This will just help them identify it better. Also, you may end up having to bring somebody from the court out to identify the scene on a trial or something. And this just helps identify where you are at. <laughs> Have a good day from Jim Paris and the Oregon State Police.